how do we use this stuff? All right. First off, you can select a particular behavior that you're interested in increasing. How do we do it? All right. Start general. Oftentimes, this is the outcome type of stuff. Being successful. All right. So whatever being successful means, does that mean making a lot of money? Does that mean starting a company? Does that mean helping others? You know, what does it mean? How do you define being successful? So we're going to start general. And then what you do is you actually start to narrow that down. Right? So get extremely specific. So here is an example of one of those, being to work on time. Right? So that's part of being successful. If you show up late, you're going to get fired. You know, all the time, you're going to get fired. Right? So that's not going to contribute to being successful. So start general, get more specific as you go. Right? Break that down into what, when you say, uh, what does successful mean? You're going to identify several behaviors that are associated with that. Right? Those are the things that you're going to then try to strengthen using reinforcement. The same thing goes if you're trying to manage somebody else's behavior, right? So if you're you know, trying to uh, get somebody to be more cooperative, okay, well, that's the general thing. What does that mean? Break that down. Sharing toys, um, you know, answering emails, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, you're going to have to narrow that down to something specific. Um, so again, this is where we start to split out those. Oh, what do you call them? Uh, the outcomes versus the behaviors. Right? So we're going to split out that outcome and break it down into the individual behaviors. This is There's a certain art to doing this because you might, uh, the first time you do this, you might get overly molecular. Okay, um, And that's okay. You, know, you, you can always strengthen those very finite, those very small responses, if you will, um, and you'll get the, the overall outcome. And that's fine. You know, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It just becomes a little bit more challenging as you go along. Right? Well, how do we choose reinforcers? Well, guess what? Different strokes for different folks. Right? There's, there's no more to it than that. Um, what reinforces you may not reinforce me. What re reinforces me may not reinforce, oh, I don't know, let's pick on somebody in the class. Um, and Ms. Mack sitting there back in the back side of the, you know, towards the center of the room. So what, what is a reinforcer for her may not uh, be re reinforcing for Erica. Who knows? You know, the, the thing is, is that uh, our learning history has provided us with uh, reinforcers that are available. And we're going to talk about those reinforcers and how they develop it. Um, but the thing you need to remember is that you, that you really don't know if something's a reinforcer until you try it out. Uh, and there's different categories of reinforcers right here, um, but uh, again, something's going to be different for you know everyone, right? In term, but the general categories still exist. Okay? You can have a consumable reinforcer, right? um, which is something that you would eat. You know, for me, you know, curry is a great reinforcer, but you know, some other stuff isn't. You know, Brussels sprouts not so much. You know, so um, but Brussels sprouts may be reinforcing to somebody else, right? So you just have this general category of uh, food reinforcers we call those consumables right? <clears throat> activities according to the picture here you know the surfing <laughs> that may be reinforcing for some people um, probably not so reinforcing for me I've never really done it so I, it's not gonna I assume it's not gonna be that reinforcing it may be because I haven't tried it and I don't know you know and so we always have to take that empirical approach of, of finding out is this something that's going to be a reinforcing situation but again activities can be reinforcing uh, for me you know spending a lot of time woodworking I'm a big woodworker I enjoy it I do custom stuff all the time that is something that's very reinforcing. And you can use those types of activities to strengthen other behaviors. I'll talk more about that later on in the quarter. I've got some really good examples for that. Right? Manipulative, right? things that you can do with your fingers. Right? Um, so things that you can manipulate. You know, A lot of kids like to just manipulate like clay or Play-Doh. Right? So just that manipulation sort of thing can be a useful um, uh, tool. And by manipulation, I don't mean changing someone's behavior, but I mean that you're manipulating the clay, you're manipulating the paper, uh, whatever it may be. That may be something that, that works. So playing with a favorite toy, it kind of overlaps with activities. You know, I, This is sometimes a little bit inappropriate to separate these out, but we just do have these general categories. <clears throat> And then you have professional and social reinforcers. That's pretty straightforward. Obviously, the social stuff is obvious. You know, access to friends, access to family, um, or even access to I don't know. You know, we used to use chat rooms a lot. Not so popular anymore. But uh, maybe Facebook is reinforcing. That's both a so activity and it's social. Um, so who knows? Professional stuff. Uh, you know, the feedback from colleagues or. Uh, whatever the case may be. You know. So we've got a lot of different uh, reinforcer classes or groups of reinforcers that are available. 
The trick is that you have to figure out which one of those you want to try and use. And as you're working with your own behavior, you know, for this self change project, you, you want to identify the things that you like. So I, the easy way for me to um, to tell you to identify your reinforcers is come up with a list of the things that you like: food, activities, um, and then professional and social type of stuff. You know, I'd, you can leave the manipulative out for your thing and for your behavior, unless it's something that you that's really obvious to you. But it can be a bit more of a challenge to think of the manipulative ones, at least for our own behaviors. Uh.